So we are grateful for your presence. And I am Brad Mercero. And uh, I really think I've got the best seat in the house. Um, and I've enjoyed playing music here over the past 25 years for Dunaway Lunchtime Diners, Promenade Listeners, Auditorium Events, and uh, also uh, Metcalf Gigs. Wednesdays are fun over here in the pool hall. After I hang out there, sometimes I saunter over to the uh, uh, the heights, the just the aquafit where they're exercising and uh, try to conjure up some appropriate music. But Handel's water music is not part of my repertoire. <laughs> uh, my friend friend David Duffy is a seasoned professional who, courtesy of Ethel, is bass. <laughs> has been playing a variety of gigs in multi-configurations in Portland and far beyond now, approaching five decades. Um, he currently plays uh, riverboat gigs with Bo Ayers, who's the former arranger and conductor for Liberace. His uh, duo gig with pianist Jim Blackburn for 29 years is the longest in Portland. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> we simply want to have some fun this evening. Uh, that's the goal. And uh, we're going to be playing some songs from the American Songbook, uh, some from the movies, uh, playing a few originals, and uh, though frequently asked, I don't live here. <laughs> Yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's my icebreaker. <laughs> okay. Uh, our first song is Love is Here to Stay, and this is the last song that George wrote. It's beautiful. And there's a bit of a story behind it, because he wrote the music, but there were no lyrics. And Ira, as a loving tribute to his brother in 1938, published it and wrote the words. It's very clear, our love is here to stay. Furthermore, George um, hummed the verse, but never bothered to write it down. So there were two composers who happened to be listening to George humming. <laughs> they were Vernon Duke and uh, Gershwin enthusiast named Oscar Levant. <laughs> and uh, they put it together. So I'll start with the verse. Oh, and then of course it ended up in a classic American film, 1951, American in Paris, Gene Kelly singing to Leslie Carroll. It doesn't get better than that. <laughs> I swing the microphone away so you don't hear me humming along.
we are doing uh, an antiquated joke, but it's uh, for our generation. We can say that this next song is the uh, theme song to uh, Photomat. It's known as Someday My Prince Will Come. <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows about Photomats anymore. So that's, yes. And, uh, it is uh, a favorite of jazz musicians because the, the changes are a little bit. There, there just, there's some interesting harmonies in it, and it was written uh, 1937 for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And, uh, yeah. and then the, there was some direction, actually, to the composer Frank Churchill from Walt Disney. Uh, Disney told him that what he wanted was something quaint. Quaint. He actually said he didn't want it to be hot stuff. Now, I don't know, that's from Wikipedia, I don't know what he meant by that, but I, I think that Churchill filled the bill by making it quaint. <laughs> Thank you. 
just heard a Picardy third. How about that? <laughs> Ears. I read something very interesting about theory recently that really makes sense to me, which is theory is really nothing more than connecting your ears to your soul, for heaven's sakes. I mean, that's it's just it's just a little a device. So. Oh, oh see, uh, David, I, I I wish to mention that you and I first played this next song 50 years ago. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What a memory. <laughs> We were in this is a I, was, I was five years old. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was the one who was twenty, that's why I remember that So it was at Mrs. Tui's house, it was up my toilet and it was sing. Or doing the song sing. This is a song written by Joe Raposo for uh, Sesame Street. And it was written in 1971. That's when David and I first played. You were working with a singer, Susan, was her name? Susan Sanders. Yeah, yeah. It's a great song. Um, Joel wrote other tunes. You might be familiar with this one. He wrote Kermit the Frog's theme song. It isn't easy being green. <laughs> he wrote great tunes. Oscar Peterson liked it. He did a, a record with uh, Gene Perling and singers, all Sesame Street music. It was incredible. And uh, this has a good message, too, because part of the words are, don't worry if it's not good enough, talking about the song, for anyone else to hear. Just sing. Sing a song. I think that's oh, good advice. Oh, Carpenter's big hit went to number three. Number one in Japan with a children's choir. <laughs>
Brothers in that song. It's called It Could Happen to You. It's written by Jimmy Van Heusen and Johnny Burke, 1943. <clears throat> it was a bestseller for both Bing Crosby and for uh, Joe Stafford. Uh, got to Billboard's top ten that particular year. Just a pretty melody. So we started in F2 and then to a G. Oh, and I've got an intro. <laughs>
teacher in college, we didn't have a jazz program at Portland State, but I lobbied for my jazz credits. And uh, this guy would write out an arrangement in 10 minutes. So Gene? Yeah, Gene. <laughs> so I told David that in this song, I wanted to do the more ending. I was just copying Mr. Comfort's penciled out arrangement. Thank goodness, 50 years later, it hasn't faded. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not in my memory. Ah, uh, Chopin. Jovin, Chopin. <laughs> um, this is an Antonio Carlos Jovin tune called How Insensitive. I love it. It's dark, it's haunting. Jovin loved Chopin. He liked Opus 28, number seven, The Prelude. He loved the flavors in that piece, and I think he did some pretty generous uh, borrowing. So that's what we're going to hear.
to record it. Full orchestra, one take, bingo. <laughs> that was it. Uh, it's a beautiful song, Once I Had a Secret Love.
This next song is called I'm Leaves. And I was thinking about training I had in college about learning about the doctrine of the affections. That's, that's when the music, the lyrics, you're talking about a mountain and the music goes up high and the valley goes low. And I was remembering that the big hit of this was uh, Roger Williams' piano. He did all these descending arpeggios, very virtuosic in the doctrine of the affections. So it sounded like the leaves falling. I do have a, a musician friend, um, whom I won't name, who's just, I, I rather like his dry sense of humor, and when I told him the story, he said that perhaps we could call it the doctrine of the afflictions. <laughs> For the afflicted? <laughs> Thank you. 
the sweetheart tree. A movie starring Natalie Wood, Tony Curtis, and uh, Jack Lemmon called The Great Race. And in the middle of it was this uh, it's kind of a fanciful movie, this beautiful waltz written by Henry Mancini and Johnny Mercer. It was written in 1965. Thank you. 
We're supposed to take risks in life, right? Yes? Okay. So, uh, my brother song with my father's favorite expression. It's, uh, uh oh. Oh. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. 
audience and you've called my nerves, so thank you very much. <laughs> we have one more song. It's written for a lady who's in heaven. Um, she's a resident. She's a resident here. I, I befriended her two years ago. Her name was Nan Hall. And I was so thrilled to see Nan two years ago as the oldest living member of the Mellow Mans. They did a concert right here. Um, I met Nan in a different context. She was eating dinner, no, did lunch before COVID. And she exclaimed, so I could hear her from the piano, <laughs> I want me my sweet potato fries. <laughs> and I like that phrase, sweet potato fries. And I thought, see, sweet potato fries. I got a motive and uh, she got a song. So this is, this is sweet potato fries. David Ethel, a.k.a. Ethel, will be playing the first, uh, the first 12. <laughs>